Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for joining me today. It is June. I always have to think. Birthday month. <laughs> and uh, so we are launching our newest So Confident project. And I have the t-shirts here to show you. We're really excited about this project. It's simple but fun and I think real doable for a busy life, busy time of year where we're gardening, attending lots of family events and so forth. But for this month we are using the ET pattern <clears throat> and we're not making any changes to the body of the pattern. And if you recall, we have added sizes to the ET. So we have extra small to XXL and 1X to 5X. And of course you have the choice of purchasing the digital pattern and having us print it for you. Or you can print it out on your home printer, tape the pages together, or send it to a couple of other services as well. But we've cha not changed the body of the t-shirt at all. But we have given you three sleeve options that are different than the sleeve that comes in the pattern. And so not usually in So Confident, we have you do some pattern work. But this month, we thought we'd just make it super easy for you. And we have the three sleeves fully graded in all the sizes. So all you have to do is choose the sleeve that you want and put it in the garment. The class launched a week or so ago. And we did it a little bit differently. We did a Zoom live class that was recorded, including the question and answers at the end. And so if you sign up for the class for the month, or if you have it as part of your yearly membership for So Confident, that's the format of the class this time. I teach you how to make the t-shirt in part one. And in part two, I show you how to construct each of the three sleeves. So here they are. This is the pleated sleeve, and it is longer than the original sleeve, but we've added an inverted pleat coming out of the shoulder, and it's sewn for about an inch and a half at the bottom. So that's a nice, simple, almost tailored detail. The second one is a ruched or gathered sleeve. So you have a bit of a plain sleeve, and then there is a rectangular-ish shaped piece that gets gathered onto that, and this edge is raw, even though the hem of the sleeve is uh, hemmed. Uh, we like that because we're using a jersey for the, the uh, garment, and in fact we have nine colors of kits to offer you this month, which is super incredible. And because it's a jersey, then this edge will curl. So if you're using an interlock, it wouldn't curl, which is still fine, but I think that little roll is especially nice. That's the gathered sleeve. And the third sleeve is a longer sleeve, about mm, three quarters length, maybe a little longer than that. It has two tails and it ties. So there's a little dart for about two inches here, then it opens up to a vent and that includes the ties that get tied. So those are the three sleeve options and all of them fit on the ET pattern and check it out, it's a great class for the summer. Uh, cotton jersey, so comfortable, so easy to wear. 95% cotton, 5% is organic cotton actually, and 5% spandex. So check out the nine kits, check out the class, hope you'll join me on that. So today's topic really came out of looking at some fabrics that we have that are really unique. I have actually never seen anything like these three Ponte fabrics that I'm going to show you. So at So Kansas in April, Barbara Hartzell from Tulsa actually used one of the Ponte knits and made a dress. And she combined it with a woven sleeve and the fabric happens to be a Liberty of London cotton. So I'm going to show you the dress. And we thought it was so fantastic that we asked her to send it to us. Unfortunately, she's smaller than I am, so I couldn't wear it or I would have had it on. But amazingly, she used the Marceau top. Now I have on the Marceau top. 
I have another one here that I can show you uh, in case you can't see all the details. But the Marceau top is split into two sections, a right front and a left front, right back, left back. So there's a seam down the front and the center back. And then the pieces are shifted so that there's about a three quarter inch offset both at the neck and at the bottom. Small, but definitely can see it. And I really like the way that neckline um, happens. And one of the nice things about this neckline and the binding is, you know how normally on a t-shirt you have to put the binding in on the round? Well, this time you do it one half and one half. And that is super easy to do. Easier than in the round. But one of the features of this garment that we like so well is the sleeve. It's a pretty full sleeve, so it's not a tight sleeve because there's a, a blousey effect to it that's created by two pleats in the seam. So here's a pleat, and here's a pleat, and then there is an under sleeve. I'm trying to get this so you can see it here. There's a, an under sleeve panel right there, and those pleats come into that somewhat narrow panel. And then it's finished off with the cuff at the bottom. So taking the Marceau top, which is what I have on and what this is, Barbara sim simply lengthened it. Now she worked with Samantha Plo, who was here at Soak Kansas as well. And the two of them just huddled together for several hours really and worked this whole thing out of how to do this. So she took the right front and right back and lengthen that 25 inches from the original pattern. And then the left front and left back is lengthened 19 and a half inches. So there's quite a bit of an offset here. Um, what's the math on that? Six and a half inches, something like that? Five and a half, five and a half inches. So instead of that three quarters of an inch at the bottom, there's about five and a half inches of difference. And she still did the offset up here, uh, not quite the three quarters of an inch. So this has just simply been lengthened. We still have the center front seam, the center back seam, and the binding. And now we have this contrasting fabric, which is a Liberty of London cotton. And when it's all said and done and these are together, it's just a fantastic combination. Nothing different about the sleeve, same construction. The only thing that's different is that because this particular Ponte knit is not extremely stretchy, she added a bit of width to the cuff just to make sure she could get it over her hands, it was comfortable. And that is something that you would want to do as well, kind of wrap a piece around your wrist and just see what length it needs to be. So she made some comments when she sent the dress. She was so kind to send the dress to us. She said that she wasn't super happy with the binding, that perhaps it wasn't lying as flat as maybe she would have hoped. Well, that's one of the issues when you're working with a fabric such as Ponte, because Ponte, while stretchy, is not like incredibly stretchy. So sometimes you have to reduce the length of these binding pieces. And that probably is what could have happened on this dress. Maybe taken off a half an inch, see where you are, maybe an inch, that's probably too much. You just have to experiment because every knit is different. I'm sure that on, we've seen this on her and it's beautiful and nobody would ever notice these bindings. But you know, we sewers are very critical of our, our own work. So next time she makes this, if she uses a ponte or if you end up making it, you know, you might remember that and maybe take, start with a half an inch smaller on these binding pieces. Um, she's done some straight stitching on hems, which is great. She's finished the hems with a three thread serger, but this is Ponte and it does not ravel. She could have left that raw, but it is nice to have a finish on it. I think that's totally optional. I've done it both ways. In fact, I was looking at this dress and another dress I'm going to show you, and we have different techniques all over the place. While we're at it, let's look at the seam finish. This is a typical seam finish for Ponte knit. Press the seam open. 
If you try to do our sort of standard seam finish of sewing the seam and then sewing the, uh, serging the two raw edges together, that is really bulky. So a seam pressed open is better. She has finished the seam beautifully. You could also leave it raw. You could trim it a little bit, not much, and press it open. So those are a couple of choices for seam finishes. Hem finishes can be straight stitched. They can be zigzag stitched. It can be cover stitched. You have some options there as well. No difference in putting a woven sleeve into this, into the knit. Just cut out the woven sleeve and it goes in there just fine. And they sew together beautifully. If you're using a walking foot, which I always do on knits, then of course you're not going to have any trouble with um, uh, puckering or gathering or whatever. So I just think this is really interesting combination. She had a picture, I wish I could remember, uh, and maybe if she's watching today, I'm not sure, uh, if there was an inspiration picture that went along with this, I kind of can't remember, but if there is, maybe you can put it in the chat and we'll, we'll post that. Um, let's see. Uh, the other thing that she used is a Microtex needle. And actually, I'm about ready to do a complete flip from what I always talk about in terms of needles. For all my life, I've been sewing with universal needles, and I have had no trouble whatsoever. But we do have a local customer named Debbie who does have issues with her sewing machine, which happens to be a Bernina. She has not been satisfied with the quality of the stitch. So while we were in England, we had a little chat with Nancy Spangler, who has worked and taught for Bernina forever and is an expert with all of these issues about stitching. And she recommended that really both of us switch to Microtex needles. And so I'm going to do that, and that's what Barbara used, and she was happy with her stitch. So I have ordered some Microtex needles, and the next time I see you, I'm probably going to be able to talk about Microtex needles over universal needles. So that is the Marceau dress. But these fabrics also would look good in a different dress. So this is the Noto dress. Now that is taken from the Noto t-shirt. So we're working with two t-shirts here, Marceau and Noto. And the Noto tee has a couple of signature techniques to it. First of all, it's a cut on sleeve. It's not an inserted sleeve. There is a one inch seam allowance across the shoulder. And so you have a little bit of a top stitching detail across the shoulder, which I think is very nice. And a deeper hem, two inch hem at the bottom. Most teachers have five eighths, three quarters, something like that, but this two inch gives us a nice quality look. I was, um, I think Aaron hung this particular one on the rack today. Uh, and I love this because this has a really unique neck binding detail. So this, what looks like piping, is actually a flat piece, one inch wide, three quarters of an inch wide, jersey knit that curls. And you can uncurl it for a little bit and stitch down the center of it, and then it'll curl around the stitching. And that is a really fun detail. I'd forgotten that this t-shirt had it. This has some nice top stitching. Uh, I'm recommending, as I did in the ET class, that you top stitch a little ways away from the ditch of the seam. I think it's a better look than something that's really close. I, I'm, I think that's more um, to my liking these days. And then this one has been cover stitched, which is, of course I really like. This is Ponte. And I did reduce the distance, the length of the neck binding on this. So this is lying really nice and flat. So in addition to lengthening this, I created a center front seam and a center back seam. And I did overlapping seam. Now Ponte is an interlock. So Ponte doesn't curl. And so you just get a simple overlap without that curled back, piped look. But I love that look. Just a little detail, not much. Doesn't take that much more time to construct something. But it still has the one inch shoulder seam to it. 
nice deep hem on the sleeve, kept the two inch hem on the bottom. I don't know if I can get this up here or not. Um, and that's been cover stitched. And did a nice vent pleat opening on each side. Now the how to make this is in a couple of places. If you are a member of So Confident uh, from series nine, you have this and perhaps you've never considered the idea of actually printing out some of those tutorials. So this one is the Noto T and we actually did three, a series of three different Noto T's. But if you print out this, you get the complete how to alter your pattern, how to lengthen it, how to add that center front seam, center back seam, and then instructions on how to make the garment. In addition, you get instructions on how to make this noto, which is a layered noto in color blocking. This time we dropped the shoulder seam forward, did a contrasting band, and used three colors of viscose knit. But that's a fun look. And so the how to do that is also in this, in addition to a third way of making another uh, noto. So Ponte knits are the perfect knit, particularly for travel, I think. If you need a nice, simple dress, uh, it's a great uh, way to take a good looking dress, add a scarf, add some jewelry, add some great shoes, a bag or whatever, accessorize it. If you need to jump that up and go to a nice dinner or a banquet or something like that. So um, let me see. The other way to learn about these is we have the separate classes that you can also print out. Now we've printed these out and we've done this little binding because they're digital magazines, digital tutorials. And so we've printed them out and put the binding on them. So we have the one for the dress. We have the one for the layered t-shirt. And I don't think this is actually the right one. I think I picked up the wrong one. No, here it is. Well, maybe. <laughs> anyway, there's another one. Um, I think I picked up the wrong one. Anyway, there are three separate tutorials that you can print out plus what we call the compendium, which combines all three into one magazine. And they're beautiful magazines. Bessie put these to, puts these together, and she adds beautiful photography, inspiration photos, and they're really fun to have and to look at and to use as reference materials. They can go in your library of uh, how to make sewing workshop garments. So um, I think I've talked about details. Hem finishes can change, neck binding uh, finishes can change, seam finishes change. So let's look at these fabrics. When I say I've never seen anything like this, I really mean this. I've been in the fabric business for, since 1989. How many years is that? 34 years or something like that? And in 34 years, I have never seen Ponte, printed Ponte knits of this look. You know, we have, we've had printed Pontes. They're kind of subdued, a little bit dark. Sometimes there's, there's, sometimes there's a little bit of a flower. Maybe there's a plaid. Maybe some like little check or something. But never have I seen beautiful Ponte knits that are printed with incredible colors and detail. So these are the three Pontes. Now they are 95% viscose and 5% spandex. They're made in Italy. And we know the fiber because it's printed on the selvage. And it also says made in Italy. So we know where it came from. And so there are very typical Pontes, if you know what that is. There is a good stretch to it. And as I said before, Pontes are interlocks which do not curl. So, you know, when you stretch this, there's no curling to the right side or the wrong side or even vertically. Unlike, I don't think I have another knit up here. Uh, jerseys will, when you stretch them, on the cross grain will curl to the right side. That's how you know a jersey 
versus an interlock. It's also how you know the right side versus the wrong side. So we put together some combinations here of dress, sleeves, pants, blouse, all kinds of um, combinations. So here is the ponte in these, this beautiful magenta and you know my color of green, citrus green, and some fantastic turquoise. And this is a Liberty of London, London print. Now when you're looking at something like this, you know, you have to stand back. You can't stand here and say, okay, that purple matches that purple. You have to stand back, squint, and you probably on the screen are even seeing it as we're seeing it if we're squinting. Uh, but I think that scale is important. So this is a small design with a large design. This is a more regular design. This is a more abstract design. And so to me, this is like a beautiful combination. But is every color from here and here or vice versa? Not really, but it doesn't matter. I think that that would make an amazing dress. This is the combination that Barbara chose. And what I think is interesting is when you look at, at it here, it looks different a little bit than the dress. Now granted, these look the same, but the sleeves are just about 20% of the dress. So you're only looking at something to use for sleeves. You're not combining it as half of the dress or the lower part of the dress or something like that. So the top one is the Ponte, and the bottom one is the Liberty of London. Now we talk about Liberty of London a lot, and one of the things we love about Liberty of London is that it's made of Tana Lawn cotton, which is a very special cotton that's made for Liberty of London, and it feels like silk. It is the finest cotton you will find. We only order from the, the seasonal collections, we don't order the classics, so to speak. And Liberty of London, as with everything else, has gotten to be expensive. It's just the way it is. But we are keeping our prices in line with, as best we can, with the other vendors who sell Liberty of London. But there are fewer of them in this country than there used to be, and we're just really one of the few. So take advantage of this range of Liberty of London fabrics that we have, and they're gonna be changing all the time. We've already ordered from the next collection. It'll be, they'll be coming in, who knows when? We never really know, but probably sometime this summer, maybe early fall, something like that. So we stay ahead of it and order the best of the best from the seasonal collections. So these are the Liberty of London combinations with the Ponte. And then over here, this is actually a viscose rayon from Cavalli. Cavalli, Cavalli, the designer. And so this has a drapier feel to it, but really interesting. Now, I just broke all my rules with this because the scale of this is pretty similar to this. But I think the fact that this has a light background and then it's just so mixed. You could have some fun and choose particular areas of this to do your sleeves. And you could, you could play around with this. You could drape this fabric, let's say on a dress form if you have it, and you could hold this fabric up and mix it up a little bit, turn it, put it upside down, whatever, and see what looks the best. I made that mistake a couple of weeks ago when I was doing the, in fact, it was last week when I made the dress that I'm taking on vacation. And I chose a, something for the contrasting band. And I didn't think very much about how I was cutting that out. And now I wish I had actually placed the fabric first on the bottom of a sleeve so that I would know which part of the motif was gonna be on the front, which was gonna be on the back. I think I would have made a different selection. Still worked out fine, but I think this is the kind of fabric because of its range of difference here from light to dark that you could uh, play with. Maybe you want one dark sleeve, one light sleeve. Maybe you want two light sleeves, two dark sleeves, who knows? But it would really be fun. So even though we're recommending dresses, I know that dresses are not for everyone. Um, but so don't think that you have to make a dress. These are perfectly fantastic fabrics for helix pants, maybe a slim pant, um, uh, some kind of a bottom, maybe a skirt, uh, but 
of the pants fabrics that are pants patterns that we have I think probably the helix would be my choice something like that um, these would make great jackets beautiful jackets maybe a Chicago jacket uh, maybe a sterling jacket maybe a Tremont jacket and then just choose a solid color or a small print to go with it so I think you can uh, think top bottom dress skirt whatever but the weight of this is classic Ponte so if you know what Ponte is which by the way is that famous word that was invented by manufacturers because there's not a single textbook that I have in my library that has the word Ponte in it so it's a mm, sort of newish word okay do we have any questions yes um, can you lengthen the sleeve for the noto um, I think so uh, there would be somewhat of a limit um, but yes I think you can just figure out where you want it and measure from this point and come down and decide where you want it. I don't think you're going to be able to make it a long sleeve out of the noto, but uh, you could certainly lengthen it a few inches and just keep going down the shoulder and then figure out the circumference at the point where it's going to be and die into that. But you know, there was an interesting article in the Wall Street Journal over the weekend. The new look is to have a short sleeve over a long sleeve t-shirt. So you can do that. Um, and I'm going to get a close up of the Cavalli piece here. Okay. I don't know if you want to flip yeah. up the, or I guess you could pull it out and I can do see that. the drape. You want me to do that? Let's do that. Okay. I think it's such a beautiful piece. You see how beautifully drapey this is. Mm -hmm. Those colors. There is, there are some motifs here, like I'm looking at a circle, it's kind of ahead of me, but I think when you're thinking about your sleeves, you don't have to really worry about any of this. Just cut them out. Beautiful. Um, do we happen to know the yardage um, for the dress? Well, if you're lengthening the, uh, the Marceau 25 inches, that's two-thirds of a yard. I'd get an extra yard from the um, required yardage on the website. You know, we have all of our yardages on the website. When you uh, go to the product and you scroll down, all the yardages are there. These are 60 inches wide. Well, they're 55 inches wide. I always sort of think about that as 60. Um, and so I use 60-inch Yeah, I use 60 inch um, recommendations when I'm looking at 55 inch fabric. If there's something sort of complicated, then maybe I might add another half a yard or something, but in this case, I don't think you need to do that because you're only talking about, well, I'll tell you, as I say that, uh, you don't have to cut out the sleeves. So you can eliminate the extra length that would have been taken up by the sleeve. Yeah, it depends on how it's laid out. You know, if the, the sleeves were, Along yeah. the width, kind of squeezed yeah. in there. Yeah. Um, I would get an extra yard pieces. just to be able to, to mm -hmm. play. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And For, what's the fabric content, um, the fiber content of that Cavalli that you're playing? Uh, this is, uh, whoops, Jean Stanley is laughing. <laughs> <laughs> um, this is rayon, viscose, 100% viscose. Okay, okay. Could the Cavalli go with the lower Ponte? And you just said it there with I it, so. think <laughs> so. I think it's kind of amazing how they all mix I together. I know. Here, let me just hang it there. Oh, Jean's smiling. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look at that. Oh, that's fun. That's pretty cool. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I want to see what it looks like with the other one. <laughs> now that we're into this. There's so many colors in that. I know. Cavalli print. I think you could do this the Cavalli with any of them. Mm -hmm. What 
what's the back of the ponte look like? Is it the back of the ponte is pure white. Okay. You see a little bit of the print through it. So let's say on the Chicago jacket, you know, where that little bit of backing shows, I don't think that'd be a problem, but I don't think you want to make something where a lot of the back shows. Because you do see the print on it. But it's definitely a print. Okay, and what does the, you were talking about cover stitch. Um, can you explain a little bit about what that means? Sure. We have a class that you can sign up for called cover stitching. And cover stitching is a feature, either an additional feature on certain sergers, or it's a dedicated separate machine that kind of looks like a serger. But it's a different threading system, and it's, um, you have to be able to do a chain stitch on a serger in order to do a cover stitch. But this is cover stitching, where you have two rows of parallel stitching. Three rows is also an option on some cover stitching machines. And one of the reasons why I love cover stitching is that it also covers the raw edge on the inside of a piece, whether it's a hem or a neck binding or wherever you have it. So it's, it's the closest we as home sewers can get to ready to wear, because this is the stitch that is so common in ready to wear. But it is something you have to purchase. If you've purchased a, an, a regular overlock serger, you're probably not going to have it. But you can go to your local dealer, any brand has it, and discuss with them your options for either a dedicated machine or a, a a piece of equipment that does both. If it does both, you're going to have to change the threading system to go back and forth. All of that is explained in detail in that cover stitch tutorial, which we have, and you're welcome to take that. And you said that this was a ponte knit, this no-toe? Yes. Okay. Like a rayon, usually rayon, nylon, Yes. spandex. And what's the weight of that? Uh, this is a tiny bit lighter weight than these. Mm -hmm. And then the other sleeve um, fabrics, again, those are Liberty of London. Correct. Cotton. Uh, yes, these are woven sleeves. So this is knit, Ponte knit, and the sleeves are woven, Liberty of London, and the cuffs are the Ponte. All right, I don't see any other questions. Okay. All right. So what's on sale? All right. On sale today, these six fabrics. And we have the Marceau pattern, which is print and digital. We have the Noto T, which is digital only, printing option available for you. We have the... Uh, tutorial, Betsy might have to help me with this. Um, we have the compendium, which is the magazine that shows you all three ways to make the noto, including how to make this dress. And we have a separate tutorial on how to make the noto tea. Am I right about that? Well, we have the whole year, like, you know, where you are learning about the noto and the Chesney and. Okay. And that kind of dives the whole into year. more okay. detail. Okay. Um, so, but I got a little confused about that myself. She might have to but. link that. She can link the ones that. Okay. Um, that we have on sale yeah. this week. So the two patterns, fabric, and a couple of uh, tutorials, magazines, classes, whatever. <laughs> and one last question. Okay. Um, oh yeah, Betsy did say we do have the whole series nine on sale and the compendium. Okay, great. So. All right. Um, and then, so on the Noto, is that, um, how is that different than the original pattern? The original pattern was the Milano. Is that the question I wonder? Probably. It's the same. Right. Yes. Yeah. Same sizing. We may have expanded the sizes. I don't think that one only goes up to extra large. It does? Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. So. Yeah, if you have the Milano pattern from 35 years ago, 
You have the note.